Six News at Five starts with this breaking news alert. You know what makes me angry? It is, uh, we, all, we have limited resources. We have, uh, uh, in Franklin County and all of a sudden District of Ohio, we have a just massive overdose epidemic where we've got people dying of fentanyl, people stacked up like cordwood at our corner's office. We've got a violent crime rate skyrocketing. We've got two Franklin County Sheriff's deputies shot this morning in Columbus. We got cases with real victims. And I have to take, we have to take our resources away from those real victim cases and investigate and prosecute uh, some politicians who just won't do their damn job. Strong uh, message today from the U.S. Attorney as the Ohio House Speaker and several others are arrested on federal racketeering charges. Here's a look at who was arrested along with Larry Householder. Jeff Longstreth is Householder's longtime campaign and political strategist. Matt Borges, a lobbyist and former Ohio Republican Party chair. Neil Clark, a lobbyist and consultant with ties to the Ohio Republican Caucus. And Juan Cespedes is a lobbyist. A corporate entity named Generation Now also faces charges. All of this stems from a controversial energy bill that passed the House last year and was signed into law by Governor Mike DeWine. The investigation started about a year ago and now features an 82-page criminal complaint. Tom Bosco kicking off our team coverage tonight at the State House. Tom, what are some of the details? Some of the details, well, how about $60 million, a campaign to get a taxpayer bailout for a utility, and politicians looking to get rich and consolidate their power. How about those for some of the details? And now House Speaker Larry Householder has been arrested by the FBI. He has been in court before a judge already today, and he is facing calls for his resignation. And let's not fail to mention the possibility of 20 years in prison if he's convicted. Now, Householder is one of five people arrested. The other name folks might recognize is Matt Borges, the former chair of the Ohio Republican Party, also arrested three other lobbyists, as you guys mentioned. Now, this was all related to the passage of House Bill 6 last year. That was the taxpayer bailout of First Energy's nuclear power plants in northern Ohio, a controversial, bitterly contested bill. Interestingly, the U.S. attorney today called them Company A, but then added, we all know who we're talking about here. Now, the accusation is that money was funneled from Company A to a dark money company, and then that money went to Householder. Some of that money, at least half a million dollars, lined Householder's pockets, and some of that money went to pay for ads and campaigns for candidates. And then some of that money also went into the effort to get House Bill 6 passed. Make no mistake, these allegations are bribery, Pure and simple. This was a quid pro quo. This was play, pay to play. And I, I use the term pay to play because that's the term that they've used. Now, House Bill 6 passed and it got the governor's signature, but the U.S. attorney says there is no indication that the governor's office was involved at all. Larry Householder and the other four defendants were in court today for their arraignment. They were released without bond, but they must give up passports and firearms. They'll be back in court expected in August. Now, how about Company A? Could any officials with First Energy, energy that is, be accused of any crimes? Well, the U.S. attorney says that the investigation continues and there could be more to come. And in fact, First Energy today put out this statement saying they got subpoenas today in connection with the investigation surrounding Ohio House Bill 6 and that they fully intend to cooperate. Reporting live at the State House, I'm Tom Bosco, ABC 6 News. Thank you, Tom. Governor DeWine calling on Speaker Householder to resign immediately. In part, his statement reads, because of the nature of these charges, it will be impossible for Speaker Householder to effectively lead the Ohio House of Representatives. The governor also calls today a sad day for Ohio. Ohio GOP Chair Jane Timken is also calling on Householder to resign. She says while he is innocent until proven guilty, there is no right for him to hold office. This is a privilege extended by the people of Ohio to office holders. It's a higher calling and requires a higher level of responsibility. Timken also wants everyone else charged today to step away from the political process.
This is not the first time Larry Householder has faced an investigation. In 2004, he and several top advisors were under federal investigation for alleged money laundering and irregular campaign practices. At the time, Householder called the claims half-truths and outright lies. The government later closed the case without filing charges as Householder left the state house because he was term limited. Our cameras were on the ground today as Householder and the other four men charged in the case left federal court. A short time ago, Luann Stoya got in a few questions there. Perhaps the biggest one, Lou, does Householder plan to resign? Well, there was just shock at the state house and then surprise here at the federal courthouse. We were here as Larry Householder came down those steps just a short time ago. Householder escorted to a waiting car. And it's noisy, but listen as I ask the House Speaker if he plans to resign. Are you planning to leave office? No. He paused there for a second. He said, no, not leaving office. Householder wearing a mask, so his no comment answers difficult to hear. You may remember back in May when the speaker said he didn't own a mask and would not wear one at the state house. The vehicle picking up Householder quickly surrounded by protesters who had been waiting with reporters for him to leave. At one point chanting, we want answers and resign Householder. He looked straight ahead, did not react to the crowd. There was at least one arrest. Our ABC 6 photojournalists also at the back of the courthouse when former Ohio GOP chairman Matt Borges slipped away from the proceedings. Borges also with no comment. Angry protesters also following Borges and swarming his car. Police breaking up the crowd and Borges took off. Our cameras also caught up with high-powered lobbyist Neil Clark. Clark leaving the courthouse through the back and a waiting car. So wearing a t-shirt and jeans, we've got Larry Householder leaving the courthouse here. You know, he looked tired but not defeated. The speaker keeping in mind one of the three most powerful political figures here in the state of Ohio. Again, he says he's not leaving office. For now, we're live downtown. Lou Amstoy, ABC 6 News. All right, Luann, thank you. Now, one of the other people facing charges, as we mentioned, Matt Borges, made headlines just last month. The Ohio GOP censured the former head of the state Republican Party because he's campaigned against President Trump's reelection and is asking GOP voters to pick Joe Biden. Borges said it would not stop him from trying to prevent the president's reelection. He's also leading a political action committee to support his stance. First Energy stock is down about 17% tonight. Shares of Energy Harbor, which is a company spun off last year that now runs the plants, fell by more than 20% today. Controversy surrounding the Ohio House Speaker, nothing new in recent years. In 2018, the FBI raided the House of then Speaker Cliff Rosenberger. He stepped down in the midst of a federal investigation and has not yet been charged. A woman is in custody after a day-long standoff with police after two Franklin County SWAT officers were shot serving a warrant. Those officers are expected to be okay. Steve Levine live where the woman was arrested this afternoon. Steve. Stacia, let me show you what's going on right now. Still a very active scene here. It started this morning. This barricade began around 8 o'clock this morning when Franklin County SWAT officers came to serve a probate warrant on a woman with a history of mental illness. Police say someone then opened fire, striking the two sheriff officers. For hours, law officers negotiated with a woman, asking her to give up. At one point, a woman actually sat on the roof of the home, yelling at officers. That's when law enforcement arrested her right on the roof. A steep roof, very dangerous. Uh, you know, she could have fallen off. Uh, anything could have happened. And of course, we had to go get her and that alone could have been very dangerous. But For several hours, two women were seen on YouTube, actually live, one in a gas mask and one claiming they were not surrendering and not afraid to die. Now, one of the woman, women did volunteer about an hour before the standoff ended, and officials say they are not identifying the women as of yet and not releasing any identities. Coming up at 6, we'll tell you how social media played a role in this. We are live in North Columbus. I'm Steve Levine, ABC 6 News. Thank you, Steve. And you can follow the biggest stories as they happen on our website, abc6onyourside.com.
and on the free ABC6 app. If you already have the app, then you saw several push alerts sharing each major development as it happened. The app is free. Just search for WSYX in your app store. It's a relatively quiet weather day so far here in central Ohio, but we are tracking a few showers and thunderstorms that have slowly been making their way. Well, not so slowly. They're actually hauling, but they've been moving across the Ohio Indiana border. They are at the moment on a trajectory that will push them through Bell Fountain and on over into northern Union County in about the next hour or hour and a half. So as those move in, they could produce some pretty gusty winds and some good downpours as well as lightning and thunder. But Columbus, this is beautiful. Look at all this beautiful blue sky, just some puffy cumulus clouds, and temperatures did make it to 90 again today. We're down to 88 as we speak. Wind out of the southwest at 5. The humidity right around 45 to 50 percent, which does make it feel pretty muggy, so it feels more like it's about 91 degrees right now. Through the evening, there is a chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms, but most areas will stay dry. North of Columbus right now, you've got a better chance of storms. We'll be in the 80s to begin with, get down to around 80 degrees by 11 o'clock. Where you're not having a shower or a thunderstorm, you'll just be partly to mostly cloudy. And we still have warm days on the way. We're not finished with this just yet. We're going to look ahead in a few minutes. All right, Marshall, thank you. And take a look at this. A boat catches fire on the water. No one gets hurt, though. Details on a rescue from someone who was in the right place at the right time after the break.